Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner and uh, welcome to your 12th tutorial on how to build um, microservices and APIs with Laravel Lumen. Now we have done some, um, we've used Postman to test an uh, API and uh, we've sent an API token with it. Now let's see how we can actually do that in an um, application. Now if you remember in the past tutorial, a couple of tutorials ago, we had we built a sample client application that we called Lumen Test, and then this is what we wrote inside. It looks like a blog, and this is how we fetch the posts. But as you can see, this is not really very effective because, um, as you can see, our API has gotten complex, and we need to do some crazy stuff like um, add a token in the header. You understand? Now to do that, we have to start um, going a little deeper. So we will. We will um, have to install something called Gozzle. Gozzle will help us to manage our APIs. So you open your Lumen test folder. That is a sample client. You open it, and I already have mine open. And then I'll simply install something called Gozzle. So I'll say Composer. But before then, make sure you have Composer on because uh, we installed Composer when we were setting up our Lumen blog. So I assume you already have Composer installed. You have Composer then require Gozzle. So we're going to install Gozzle inside this particular folder. We hit enter and then make sure you have your internet on and uh, running. If your internet is on, as you can see, it has installed Composer.json and a whole lot of things will be installed here. So with Gozzle in our project folder, we can make some crazy kind of requests, including some asynchronous requests. So in case you need to read up more about Gozzle, here is the website. So you go to um, gozzlephp.org and then read up about Gozzle. Uh, as you can see already, there is a way we can make a request and then add other parameters easily. And then we can also retrieve status codes and then send a whole lot of things in the get, a whole lot of things in the header. But then what I want to show you here is that we can actually make a synchronous request in the case that you're making lots of requests. We can make a synchronous request here. It's really crazy, just like you do in in in, in some uh, versions of JavaScript. You understand? It's really really interesting, and of course you can go in deeper, dive in deeper, and read a whole lot of stuff about Gozzle. But we're going to just do the basic um, request and and see uh, how we can use it, so that in your big application you will just install Gozzle like we're doing right now. Once you install and set up Gozzle. You can start using it. So um, now Gozzle is set up. Let us start using it straight away. So there we go. Um, let's just convert our code here. You remember we just used um, fire get contents to get this request, and then um, let's just convert it to a Gozzle code. So, but before then, since remember in our Lumen test, we uh, in our Lumen blog, we've protected this route. If you should check in routes folder web.php, if you get to your posts route, we protected it with an off middleware, which means anybody that is going to access any of these routes will have to pass an API token along with it. So um, if we get back to our Lumen test inside our index.php, uh, which means if we run this particular app right now, we should see errors because um, we're not passing in an API token with it. So let's go to the browser and um, open it up. Uh, first of all, make sure that your Lumen blog is running. We have our Lumen blog running. So, and I have my WAMP server running too. Here's my WAMP server. And then I accessed my Lumen test, which is localhost slash Lumen test. And as you can see, it's throwing on all sorts of errors because um, we don't have access to that API code. So what we have to do is to use Gozzle. So we get back to Gozzle homepage, just copy the default. This is the default they have here. I'll at control C, I'll right click and I copy. Get back to our code, um, comment out this guy and uh, comment out this guy. Then I paste. First of all, um, we need to tell if we run this like this, we have an error because we need to tell um, our PHP app where to get this find this Gozo client class. So uh, because we installed Gozo using Composer 
and uh, it created a folder called vendor and uh, inside every composer file there is a file that knows where every item is which is autoload.php so we have to require autoload.php here so we just say require uh, vendor slash autoload.php and then once we do this uh, PHP file now knows where to find the Gozo app. So the next thing we we'll do is to uh, make copy this URL and uh, put here. We are basically trying to get all the list of posts. So I want to open this and just be sure that we're doing the right thing. Prefix apiv1, which will have the apiv1 slash post slash index. So we have slash posts slash index and index is a get request code in gozo this is where you specify the request if it was put if it was patch this is basically where you specify it as you can see that makes life very very easy so for now we are using a get request and then here is where you can pass all the parameters extra parameters that you want to pass in for us we just want to pass in uh api underscore token and uh we are going to pass in the API token inside here and then let us go and look for our API token. So we'll go to our database and um, there we are in our database. Oh, we need to log in and there we are. So we use one sample um, API token. So we'll copy this one. I've copied it. Copy. So we'll get back to our code and then I'll paste it here. You know, rightly, if you're building an application, you have to programmatically build this and your user has to uh, use their session or whatever to insert this. I know this is a sample user application calling our web uh, API from our web service platform. All right, so the status code, if this was successful, the status code will be 200. So what we can do, let's comment this guy out and uh, we don't need anything in the header. Let's comment it out. So this is where we need to write a little code, which means um, let's get this variable. The reason why we're getting this variable is that we're already using it to print something out here in for each. So we just need to use it again. And uh, we say this variable is equal to, we need to, this is coming in in JSON format. So we need to decode it. We say JSON decode. And there we have it. So, true. If you don't put this true, you will have an error. Just like here, if you don't put it, you will have an error. So now we have it. So we're retrieving the contents and then we're converting it to JSON and we're saving it inside this variable, which means it can now be used here. All right, so let's go back and check our application and uh, our refresh. And uh, let's see if we have. Okay, we have a little error unauthorized. Probably because this is unauthorized. So probably because uh, something there's something wrong with our API token. So let's just go hijack another API token. So we can uh, quickly copy another API token and see what is wrong. So we paste it here. And there we have it. We test one more time. And... Uh, of course, we still have this error because we are not passing this guy in as uh, a header. So what we should do is to say header. And uh, so we'll have this guy the first um, as one of the headers. We can say API token one. Remember, it's not API token. We changed it in Lumen blog. If you go to our Lumen blog, our microservices platform, and go to all service provider you see that what we're actually expecting is api token one so right here we are passing in api token one to be uh api so we're copying it copying this key to this place and uh we'll refresh we'll de delete this so if we look at it right now we're basically sending a get request to this url then uh, we are in the headers we're passing in api token and um, just to be sure we come here and uh, so this is an underscore not a hyphen so we get back to our code and convert it to an underscore so we're passing in a header 
and then we are getting converting it to JSON and uh, we're using it directly all right so we get back to our, our site and uh, if, we, if we look at it right now you see that it's refreshing it's uh, it's retrieving the right content these are the contents it's retrieving all we just have to do right now is to design this interface properly so that it will list these posts properly but it's actually getting the contents so that's it on how to um, use Gozzle. There are several um, several things you can pass in the header. What you can do is to go to um, Gozzle website and read up more about Gozzle. There are several things you can pass in the header, as you can see. User agent. You can always name your user agent anything. You can uh, then what you can accept and stuff like that. So if we get back, we can add these guys too. All right, there are a whole lot of things you can you can do with Gozzle, a whole lot of things. Uh, just make sure that um, you read up and um, you're able to use what you need in Gozzle at any point in time. So this is just basics of using Gozzle. Other things we can do is to make sure that uh, before we start outputting a post, what we can do is to check if um, the request was successful so this is how we check if the request was successful if the request is successful we get 200 200 means okay so if it's successful we can have this if not we can just say uh, if it's not successful we can just declare this out here to be something else let's say something else but you know it's an array so depending on how your application is built you can um, assign this value to something else if the request is not successful all right see you in the next video tutorial where we go and look at other things like curl gozzle is just a package for sending uh, http requests from any application but there is a built-in php uh, function for that called um, call that's C U R L. it just works exactly almost exactly like this but i always prefer to use gozzle all right we'll sit in the next tutorial and we'll go further and further in depth till we get to the point that we can document our, our api and so that third party third parties can read the api and start using it and consume it all right see in the next video tutorial and don't forget to to subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit youtube.com slash c slash brainthem org. And of course, you can always find me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook at Dave Ozala. So go check it out, Dave Ozala. And this code for this app is on GitHub. So go to GitHub, github.com slash Dave Ozala to get the codes that we've written for these two applications. So thank you very much. See you in the next video tutorial.